Okay, my friends, Shocker Du Jour. I've been talking about this for a while, but those who have not seen it will be shocked. This is Smithsonian Magazine. Herds of moss balls mysteriously roam the Arctic together as a herd. The moss isn't propelled by a slope or the wind or the sun, but the group moves in sync. This goes back five years ago to 2020. And what balls are we talking about? Well, these ones right here, and they move in a herd. Let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, they've been studying these, these glacier mice since 2006. That's a long time. That's almost 20 years. And we just needed time to push the project over the finish line. We didn't have time and energy to do that ourselves. Well, these together the team analyzed data of the moss balls for 20 years. Now, and it's still, they, they still don't know what's going on there. So it says, for now, the glacier mice are still full of mystery, a charming sight in a stark landscape. They're not attached to anything and are just resting there on the ice. They're bright green in a world of white. Well, they're growing because they're thawing out and they're living on something that was in a creature's body, which is called an endententhesis, and a tendon enthesis. Now, let me explain something to you. This particular area here, you see these stones? amongst these little moss balls. These are actually body parts, like bones. Like that, I have a lot of them like this. It's like a, a layer of tissue that surrounds something. There's another one right there. These are, these are body parts, like bone parts, primarily that are laying with this interstitium balls. Now, I'm going to show you another shot right now where it's nothing but skin. This would have had skin and bones and everything. I don't know where this is, maybe a hand or something. Who knows? Now, this is nothing but interstitium balls. And what happened here was this was nothing but skin. And so there was no real bones to it. it they're underneath here somewhere. So you have very few, you have a few little rocks here and there which are some kind of mineral inclusions in the body, but just almost nothing. These things here, and you, you need a very good microscope to see them, they're not, not visible at all. And you can see how many there are. And you see how perfectly, completely covered in moss they are. And they go to the same direction. I can explain all that, it's very simple. And you see how they are up here? Look at how many there are. And this is just one little area. It goes on and on and on and on. Now, this is up in Alaska, too. And um, it's beginning to thaw out. And as it thaws out, the biology that was frozen, just like in your refrigerator, your freezer, is now exposed and starting to basically rot. That's why there's so much methane gases coming out of the Alaska and all of these frozen areas that are now thawing. As they thaw, they start to, the, the, the breakdown of the biology creates methane gases, hydrocarbons, very deadly to the, to the atmosphere. And there's nothing you can do about it. There is, as the earth warms up more and more, they're going to get more and more bloated. And that's why I'm afraid of some of these volcanoes are, as, as, and earthquakes and all that stuff. As the bodily parts in the earth and everywhere on earth, it's not just in Alaska and so forth, or in the Arctic regions. Because the other areas, they were cold. They weren't frozen, but they were cold enough, like, you know, a refrigerator. And, um, a lot of places in the world, they still use the ground as a refrigerator. They put things in the ground, in the holes in the ground, and take them out like a refrigerator because the ground is much cooler anyway. But now it's thawing out, as you can see. And these balls are covered with moss because the moss literally was living inside that creature when it was alive. That's the only reason every single one of them could be covered like this. And that is basically bacteria to this, to these. We have bacteria living in us. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. But it does the same thing. 
it's all over everywhere. That bacteria, it lives in us and it eats and it would, it would, it would do the same thing if, if it, something died. That's what it grows on it. That's what bacteria, all this fuzzy looking stuff growing on it, is the bacteria are invading the tissues. Here, this one specific, these stones, and there is a stone in the center of these, um, and they call them the Moki marbles once they get stripped of their vegetation. You know, they, everything edible gets eaten off of that. I'll show you what they look like inside. See that? That's where the ball is. There's a stone ball in there. All right. It may not be stone right now, but as it becomes, and it rolls, I believe, this way. And it does, so that this can get more and more, you know, growth, and it comes around and give these guys a turn, and it just keeps going. Moss grows heavy on a rolling stone. And that's the stone in the middle. And the, the Moki marbles are exactly the same thing. You can see this is curved. It's going to go like that. And this, this will come around and get some light. And this will go down under. And it will just keep going around and around. And they all go towards the sun or wherever it's happening at that particular time of the year. All right. I have been talking about iron banding. Which means you got your red blood. And then you got your vein blood. Which is in the, the mud files is black. And they separate. This is where the red blood is. And red blood makes moss grow heavy, just like I showed you those balls. They're covered with red bloody meat, basically. And the, the moss was eaten into it. That's why they, those moss balls. This, on the other hand, is where there's vein blood. This is lichen. It it uses the black blood, which is the, the magnetite, which is a different chemical formula than the red blood. The red blood has extra oxygen, Fe2O3. O3 gives the extra oxygen. Fe2O2 is the one removed oxygen. So when this interacts with some biology, some lichen, it just starts growing on the, that particular type of chemistry. That's what it wants. That's what it wants to grow. This, the moss, is what grows in this. Now, I mean, I know it's doing it. I can't account for how, why it's doing it here. But somehow this has been separated and there's only vein blood either running down here or it's coming out of here for some reason. And this, because these are, I, I'm almost certain, these are tendons. And this guy's looking at us saying, hi, Chihuahua, <laughs> what's going on there? I would say these are tendons. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. There's no question whatsoever in my mind. That is from vein blood and that's from artery blood, the, the green. Green is, grows very, very good. They sell blood meal. You buy blood meals. You all ground up blood. And it makes things grow like that. All right, you remember the little green moss balls that are just thawing out and starting to get eaten. Well, once they have completely eaten all the good stuff, they leave these little round balls. And in this particular case, these are called the Moki marbles. They're in Arizona, Utah, all, all that whole area. And this is nothing more than skin as well. And all of that flesh has eroded down and there's all kind of mud. And there's areas over here where the, just you can see the tips of the balls because they're just laying in the mud that have run over. This is the basement layer of skin and these are the balls. Now, you see what you see here? This is, this is absolutely gigantic. This is in the United Kingdom. This is the flesh. Now that flesh would have been this. And then when it eroded, it turned into the mud which is this. All right, and the balls are sitting in the mud, which are these balls sitting in what this would have been mud, and it just eroded away, as this will at some point. And it just keeps nibbling back further and further and further. And this is what this is made out of. That is basically the skin of a creature. That's the skin of some gigantic, a gigantic, gigantic creature. Just as there would have been skin over this. And, and this one, I think, is a bigger creature because the balls, look at the size of these balls. 
Now, they say, oh, these are stromatolites. They just start growing there. No, that's not true. These are exactly like the ones I just showed you up in Alaska, the moss ones. Now, why are these brown looking and not green like the other ones? Well, this is a different a different substrate. It's in salty waters. This is a salt conditional ocean. The other ones were in fresh water. Now, these, though, do have some kind of moss type thing growing on them. Whatever it is, I don't know. They would be interesting to do a research project, see what grows on the ocean ones, in what conditions, in what areas. Is it where only where there's just a heavy duty amount of salt? Because there's going to be areas where rivers flow in and all kinds of things are going to happen. There's going to be a diversity of climates or, or, you know, living conditions. Let's go with that. Do they need a lot of salt? Do they need less salt? Do, you know, can we populate some of this stuff back to where it might have been damaged? Who knows? But what is what this is doing is it's eating literally the flesh that was here that is now eroding. And don't forget, this flesh is not that contaminated. That's It's still kind of cold. You get down 10 feet down and it's got to be at least 10 feet down by the time you hit here. Well, a lot more probably. And it's just eroding into there. So this stuff is pretty fresh. That's right off the barbecue. And this is what it is. These are those balls. Wash, 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 drop, 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 drop. Not stromatolites. And this is how dense they are. This is actual skin tissue. Or, you know, it's, it's below the skin. It's just, it's the stuff that floats around so that you can move around and it comes back to where these balls are. You see this? This is the dot here. This is what it looks like over here. Tiny, tiny, tiny little things, and they're inside, and that that's makes your skin go here and there. Moky marvels, stromatolites, not. A lot to take into account now. All of that is not just a big bump of nothing, some dirt pile. No, that is actually bodily tissue that came from this creature, something, I don't know what, it's, what part of it it was, but it, this this had all the, all the rest of the stuff, it's not just skin. Under that skin is something else, I don't know what. A skin cover, covers something, so what is down there? I don't know. But there is something down there, there's, there's no question about that. And there's going to be something down just below this too. There has to be. This is, this is skin. You don't put skin on nothing. All right, here's proof that things grow differently on different types of skin. And I believe Quetzalcoatl's head must have been scales or something. And the rest of them was all feathers made of very, very green stuff. But here's his head right here. It's not the same color, but that is totally his head. Here's his feathers of the, his, his um, crown of feathers right here. And that's why they're so green, because feathers make things grow green, his whole body. Now here he is on the East Coast. There he is right there. Now that's why I say this color didn't just happen to act by accident. It's everywhere in this whole area. It grows this chemistry. And this is very green because it's feathers, and this is very green because it's feathers all up his whole body. I know this is shocking to anybody that's new, but this is the green mountain feathers, green feathered mountains. I think that's what I have to change it to. All right, so we got the Gulf of America. We got the green feathered mountains. Might as well have the American Ocean. <laughs> now, <laughs> It's crazy what's going on, man, I'm telling you. Uh, everything's crazy. Look at this. Who would ever expect this? Nobody. There's his head. There's his beard. There's no mystery here. There's his throat. It goes right up, right up, right up, right up, right up, all the way around, wraps all the way around. Comes all the way down here, all the way down, all the way up the East Coast. It 
and he poops in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It's, it's a, I don't know anymore. I just don't know. <laughs>